I'm going to introduce quickly Dallas Johnson, who is the CEO at Credify. So here's the clicker. Good evening. Is everyone asleep now? I think so. Okay, what I'd like to do is kind of get a feel of where the audience is. How many people know what a blockchain is? Like really know? Don't give me bullshit. I want to know if you really know what it is. How many people actually own assets on it? That's not too bad. Okay. Now, how many people know what a smart contract is? Okay, excellent. That's not a bad uh, audience. Okay, so uh, my name is Dallas. I'm CEO of Credify. And we are building a solution for a big problem. So right now, $2.3 trillion of transactions happen online. And 73% of all people depend on other people's opinions when making purchasing decisions. All right, so $2.3 trillion happen online. 73% of people depend on other people's opinions as if it were their own family. But the problem is that 20% of all of that opinion data is falsified or fake. And actually, estimates are from 20 to 45% giving the, uh, the source, which is affecting about $335 billion worth of commerce. Have you ever gone shopping online and you bought something, but it didn't quite end up what you thought it was going to be? Like this guy, he thought he was going to get some $2,000 Easy's for $750. Okay, so what this means is that the existing rate and review system, or these existing crowdfunded reputation systems, are fundamentally broken. And they're broken for several reasons. One of the reasons is anonymity, of course. Because there are several platforms that allow people to go in and rate other businesses or rate counterparties to transactions even if you don't have no way of connecting them. And another issue is we turn to trolls, as it were, when we have bad experiences. You are 54% more likely to share your opinion if you've had a bad experience. And then there's this other issue. So there's a big sort of rate and review system in the US. I'm not going to name names, but they've been sued several times in class action lawsuits for what they call bullying, in a sense. So what these guys are doing is they're selling advertising services. And you can sort of imagine, I've got this platform where I want people to come in, and I know it's negatively skewed because people don't share positive experiences. Well, now I can sort of leverage that, right, in some way. I can leverage that to get you to come and buy advertising with me so we can just sort of massage that data, make it look good for you. But... There's hope. So research out of MIT by a research scientist called De La Rocas has postulated that in order to address manipulation of these systems, you need two things. And one is you need to increase or you need to have some type of cost associated with the manipulation. And the other is that you need to encourage the participation of positive actors in the network. So this is exactly what we're doing with our, our blockchain uh, solution. So we are building on EOS. And the way this works is you've got a marketplace and you've got a client and a vendor. And you also have these additional actors who have verified histories of transaction with the vendor. And they also have strongly validated identifications through our federated ID system. And what these guys do is now they can vouch or stake something on the reputation of the vendor. So what they're saying is, you know, for example, you hire someone to come do your roof. They came, they did an excellent job, and now you, you believe, okay, I'm willing to take something of value and stake it on their business. I'm willing to say, this guy is gonna do a good job for you, and I'm willing to put something at risk on that. And what happens is, he renders the service, and in the case of a positive result, the marketplace is going to reward the people who have taken a stake in their reputation. And in the instance that there's a negative result, the stake is burned. So I've written a 25-page technical white paper. Um, it is purely technical. There's no marketing fluff. Um, my background is engineering. Um, and also, we have uh, US provisionals, as well as international patents being uh, applied right now. And the reason we've gone the patent route is purely for defensive purposes. So what we say is 
these existing systems of reputation have a significant problem. And one is that they're siloed, right? So you do a really good job on TripAdvisor to develop a reputation. But you know, what about these other systems? And actually, you have a lot of these problems where you have these disparate systems where one is more focused in the US, another one is more in Europe. And you've done a good job to establish reputation on one, but then you're kind of lacking on the other, as it were. So why did we choose EOS? One, of course. Everyone knows scalability is an issue with Ethereum. So right now, 20, tra 20 transactions per second is the max theoretical capacity of Ethereum. But with Dawn 3.0 tested capacity, what they've said is they've been able to get it up to 2,000 transactions per second. And as they you know, go along and get further along in the development, we're talking about you know, up in the tens of thousands. And also, there's sort of this other aspect that people who haven't done DAP development or haven't done smart contract development really don't think much about. Because to be honest, there are very, very few consumer-facing applications. And what happens is you have this sort of scenario in Ethereum where when you want to interface to a smart contract, you're, you're faced with this sort of UI experience that is total shit, right? I mean, what the fuck? Right? No one's going to use that. I'm sorry. And also, we have this other issue, right? I call it the Where's Waldo issue with regards to solidity. So this is GitHub. And essentially, what this is doing is it's listing up the top programming languages that are being you know, in repositories on GitHub. And uh, where's solidity in that list? Let's see. It's like, um, no, it's not on the list, in fact. So why does this matter? Well, you know, everyone loves to hate Microsoft, right? But they are a very successful business. And they're successful because they're, they're developer-facing. Everyone remembers the, the bomber rant, right, where he's running around and, you know, developers develop. The reality, that's the truth. If you want a successful platform, you need to pull the developers in. You need people building on that platform. And I'm not talking picks and shovels. Everyone's building picks and shovels because everyone thinks it's a gold rush, but no one's digging, right? And that's a problem. So uh, what we do is we're going to be going after, you know, a go-to-market go strategy is to go after the on-demand services like Fiverr, um, TopTile, and these guys because, you know, these are sort of high-stake businesses. A lot of people go on there and hire people tens of thousands of dollars to get them to do development. Well, how can you trust that they're going to actually deliver? You can game the rate and review system. And also, uh, you know, the next phase, of course, is to go after the big dog sort of e-commerce e platforms. And we've actually developed a proof of concept uh, for the Japan market specifically. I'm sorry, I didn't mention, but we're actually based out of Japan. Um, and it's uh, a services marketplace for handy people. So people who are providing these on-demand services for like construction and whatnot, um, you would be very surprised it doesn't exist in Japan, which is why we saw that as an opportunity, and also for our proof of concept integrating the Credify protocol. And one of the really cool things about developing on you know, a smart contract platform like e EOS is it gives us the ability to sort of extend our core smart contract for the token and allow marketplaces to augment it with their own reward systems. And then, you know, my co-founder and I were thinking, okay, this is excellent. So we can get Credify onto marketplaces, but there's, there's like a whole nother market that is just not even re being represented right now by the rate and review system. And these are systems like Craigslist, or you know, in, in China, it's called Uba Dongcheng. So these are classified ad services marketplaces, right? So they're connecting people, but they're not transactional. And the problem is, you know, I recently spent about a month and a half in Seattle. And when I, when I went there, I actually looked on Craigslist to see if I could get some longer term sort of stay scenario. And the reality is, I, ha I had to go through at least 15 scammers before I actually found someone who had a legitimate place to stay. And the problem is because there's just no way to know anything about them in that system, right? So, you know, with our system, we have the ability to extend the core protocol in a very special way to allow for what we call credification on these platforms as well. 
So the way it works is now you've got the vendor and the client, and they're both holding a stake that matches the max potential payout in any given scenario. And how it works is we have these additional people who are randomly selected from a pool of volunteers that will come in and will witness, they will act as witnesses to the transaction. And then you have cred holders now on both sides of the equation because you don't know if this guy is actually going to pay, right? That's a problem. In these systems, a lot of times you'll run into scenarios where people like in America, checking is a big deal. People write bad checks. They may not show up or they you know, use PayPal, but then they pull back the transaction or they call their credit card company. So there's credibility needed on that side of the equation as well. And the way it works is they render the service, the witnesses come and attest, and then the payouts happen. And then in the negative scenario, the people vouching for the vendor actually have their, part, their um, stake slashed, and then they, they are responsible for paying the witnesses and the people vouching for the client side. And we have the ability to add additional witnesses, and also we have this uh, capability to add what are called vetted specialists. So there are a lot of scenarios you can sort of imagine where these people just are not going to be able to understand sort of the nature of the transaction. Let's say that it's, uh, you know, you've sold a car, and let's say the transmission's bad in the car. Well, the average guy is not going to really know, okay, well, is it a busted gas station or what? They have no idea. So what we have is the ability for people who are licensed to come in and be vetted, and then you can actually hire them to come in as witnesses. So the way we make money is that you have vouchers, vouching on marketplaces for vendors, marketplaces purchasing cred from us or our token, and then issuing that through the reward system. And this is sort of uh, sales projections. We are doing a token sale in the first year. This is where this is a you know, high number comes from. And then, of course, the, the, the uh, milestones associated as well. So um, I myself, I uh, have two successful exits. Um, I worked for uh, Authentech, which, were, which was bought by Apple, and then also for Validity, which was bought by Synaptics. So I don't know if you guys have uh, touched the Touch ID sensor on your, on your Apple iPhone, um, but essentially that was our technology. And then my co-founder, um, he has had a successful IT business in Japan for 16 years for Fortune 500 companies, uh, Paul Sutter, Oh, this is, these are our advisory board. Uh, Paul Sutter uh, is CEO or C, C, co-founder and CEO of Quantcast. Um, they do about four hundred million dollars uh, in turnover with about fifty-four percent profit margins. Um, Samuel wrote a seminal paper on smart contract and law, um, and then also a really key member, uh, Rasmus, uh, comes to us from Rakuten. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Rakuten, but essentially Rakuten is Amazon of of, of Asia. Right? These guys are massive, and you, don't, you might not see their name a lot because they do a lot of M&A, and they're just you know, promoting local brands and letting them do their thing. And then, of course, you know, the other, on the other side, we have IP and uh, on Security Advisor. And also today, I'm announcing that we have a new team member, um, and this is Adri Adrienne Ashley in the U.S., and uh, she is a CEO of YelpSucks.com which is actually a very popular site with Yelp employees, which is pretty interesting, right? Because these guys, you know, there are so many companies that just have had bad experiences on these systems. And, you know, in reality, you, you kind of have to game that system in order to fix your reputation if it's been sullied. So she has a business that actually helps companies redeem themselves. And she has connections with about 25,000 companies in the U.S. because of that business. And as well, she's you know, working with crowdsourced reputation platforms for 10 years. Uh, she's celebrity status, media connected with 112,000 followers on Twitter, and ranked number 19th most influential blockchain media personality. And then also, um, we have developed a registration and referral app because for this system to be secure, we need people, of course. And you know, we need people out there, we need people vouching for each other, we need people expressing their opinions about the, you know, the credibility of, your, of the counterparty. And so we have a several phased approach to its release. And something very special for today, which actually this wasn't updated, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the, it's okay. Um, ah, it's okay. Just come up to me afterwards. I'll let you scan my QR code and then you can get. So what we're doing is in the early phase, we're not letting everyone register. 
We're only letting top influencers register, but I set it up actually to where we have a special registration for EOS London uh, you know, event. So if you're interested, come up to me afterwards, I'll let you scan. And then sort of this is the one year roadmap. Um, it's a lot of detail, I'll skip it because you guys are tired. We're doing angel seed round for 500K, uh, pre-token sale for 3 million, and then targeting 30 million for the token sale itself. And then, yeah, see, this is not the presentation, I actually. <laughs> I'll just skip through this. Anyway, thank you.